All right, red, black, pyromancer. So pyromancer in this case refers to young pyromancer here. And this archetype to me really kind of highlights some of the sweet things that happen in historic which is just kind of the nature of the format. So this is this is really one of the things that stands out as we're really not standard plus anymore, right? In addition to Young Pyromancer being a tool that we gained from Jumpstart, we've got things like Thoughtseize from Amonkhet Remastered, we've got Innocent Blood, um, we've got Claim Fame. Like there's a lot of things in here that separate us from like what's going on in, in any standard formats. It's a pretty unique mix of cards. We've got things like Phyrexian Tower and Priest of the Forgotten Gods, along with Claim the Firstborn. You got some village rights to sacrifice things as well. So in a, Innocent Blood is especially powerful with a card like Claim the Firstborn. So if your opponent has two threats in play, you get to claim one and then Innocent Blood clear them both out. So like for two mana, you could take out two fairly good threats. The whole curve of the deck is very, very low here with Luris of the Dream Den being uh, a companion that we have access to. One thing that's interesting about this build is that some of the other ones we played with and against on the ladder were featuring Archfiend's Vessel to be a little bit more aggressively slanted. And I kind of wonder if this is a card that we're going to feel like we wish we had access to while we play. So this is, this is something that I'm going to be thinking about as we, as we play through the games for sure. So let's go ahead and pop on into some games with this and see if we can start to develop an opinion on it after getting some... Get some reps in. They also have Luris. Uh, could be a mirror. They could also be the blue white enchantments deck, though. And this hand's really good against blue white enchantments. Doesn't Vessel want the three drop reanimation spell? Yeah, perhaps. Could be could be a little bit different of a build. Okay, looks like a mirror. Yeah, both both innocent blood and priest are good against Bogles. Wouldn't be surprised to see the priest go away here. Cling cling to us is a pretty decent card for the mirror too, because it's a piece of graveyard hate. And again, when I say mirror, there could be could be variation in that too. One thing too, by the way, Wizards announced that the Tech 1200 tournament for June, July, and August is going to be historic. What's up, oldest son? What do you need? You can't have this playing while you're in here. Thank you. Have some tortilla chips. I think you need to eat some real food if you want some tortilla chips, okay? Have what? Good food and tortillas. Sounds good. Make a deal with your mom. She should be upstairs. She. I promise you she's up. Innocent Blood, also great with Young Pyromancer. Just one mana, make them sacrifice a thing. The tournament went really well, Prodigy. Had a ton of viewers and had a lot of lot of fun casting it. The tournament went better than Arena is. Just for anybody for anybody who's wondering. I like can't even give Arena the benefit of the doubt. And like, I just restarted it. Like, I restarted my... This is the first batch with this deck. I restarted my client between decks. Because I always restart my client between decks because it's a laggy, laggy application. It hemorrhages memory. All right. Mobile version ready yet? Desktop's running perfectly. Yep. How would I cast Innocent Blood again? Oh! Their Dreadhorde Archangel let me cast Innocent Blood. I got you. I understand now. 
Now I'm a big dumb stupid and I didn't see that line. It's fine. I'm getting paid off for waiting, chat. I'm getting I'm getting the most paid off for waiting. They have a village rights here, probably. Okay. So mostly, mostly didn't matter. I guess I do this, and I plan to pay three life to draw a card. Do you have a shillionaire yet? Beansy should be a shillionaire later today. Beansy, what color is your shillionaire title going to be on Discord? So I want to leave things in here that we can claim back later. They binned a village, right? So their last card must be pretty good to bin the one mana draw to you. Yeah, of course, Moose. Yeah, there's there's a number of roles in the subs discord that are visible from others. I should have I should have claimed their thing, right? It's gonna be okay. This deck's got a lot of lines in it. Like a lot of lines. Is Rainbow an option? I don't believe so. So they can cling to dust whatever I target with Dread Horde Arcanus this turn. Oh, they're clinging proactively. That's interesting. They got rid of one of my two Croxas. I didn't know there would be this much pressure on the killer. Poor Beansy. Oh, I could have escaped this and famed it too, huh? Man, there are just a lot of permutations going on here, huh? This gives it, this gives it haste. We could have aftermath this. I think, it looks like we're still super far ahead anyways. We're kind of snowballing. We have way more mana and resources than they do. Yeah, this deck, like when, when Nick and I were commentating on this deck over the weekend. Yeah, I know I could have claimed that I wanted to save claim in case I draw another sacrifice outlet.
Yeah, we'll start the Rune Terra segment by uh We'll start the Rune Terra segment looking at looking at some spoiler stuff. I've earned the thought. I basically traded two damage for three damage there. Like, they were going to have to discard it to the Croxa anyways. But I wanted to just, like, force it. Okay. Kill you. Nah, I want to just keep all my escape cards in the bin for Kroxa. Yeah, thought Thoughtseize is a super good investment. You're gonna you're gonna use Thoughtseize a lot. So. I think we're actually supposed to board Thoughtseize out in this matchup. So if you, like, look how that game played out there. While Thoughtseize felt good in the early turns, um, I think it's not good enough to, like, draw blanks in the late game. I feel like even though they have Pyromancer, Innocent Blood's probably a card worth keeping because it pairs well with our Claim the Firstborns. If you, if you plan on playing Historic... Putting four thought seasons in is gonna is gonna you're gonna get you some of those. I don't think this is a dual shot matchup. And bringing another removal like a braid for their pyromancers. Predict the value of thought seas to rise to the cost of one rare wild card. Yep. I need two more cuts. So like maybe I trim innocent blood on the draw. Yeah, I don't know that I'm smart enough to play this deck either. There's a lot going on. Feels like if you're someone who liked Mardu Pyromancer back when that was a deck in Standard. It's probably, probably, this is probably a good fit for you. I think Thoughtseize is a safer, safer craft than Collected Company. Collected, collected Company goes into a very specific type of deck. I'm going to draw a red source. Um, collected Company goes into a very specific type of deck. Thoughtseize goes into most things. We lead on tower here, so this way they don't know we drew red mana, so they play their two drop. And then we can claim it plus eat it. Thought seasons in both of the decks in the finals. Yeah, how many that's a good question. How many thought seasons were in the top eight? And uh like so many wins decks. So, if we look at the decks that went 6-2 or better, there were 8 decks that went 6-2 or better, and 5 of them were Thoughtseize decks. All, all 5 decks that hit 7 wins or more were Thoughtseize decks.
Are they Thoughtseize decks or decks with Thoughtseize? I'm not really interested in the semantics of that that point. So technically can't escape cracks here without a creature or a black source. They draw village rights? This, this is aggressive. Would you consider Wrath of God a safe craft? Yeah, definitely. I think the semantics of that are mostly irrelevant, Dumping Truck. So exile all your lands first, and then, like, it gets kind of tough from there, because, like, creatures you can get back with claim fame and... Spells you can get back with, uh... Spells you can get back with Dreadhorde Arcanist. Crocs, it kills people very quickly, chat. Sounds good, BZ. Why didn't you village rights where they shocked your priest? Yeah, the Phyrexian Tower doesn't make taps for colorless normally. I don't think there's... I think the... I think there isn't really a you always do this or never do this type shortcut for that AJ Crane. A lot, of, a lot of times, magic players like to, like, a question, question, I get asked, like, heuristics, like, mental short quick, quick, cut questions like that a lot, and I think they're some of the worst questions you can ask in magic, or in card games in general. Like, trying to lock yourself into heuristics like that tends to do you more, more harm than good, I think, a lot of the time, when it comes to developing and making decisions as a player. Everyone shillionaire color, right? Ah, maybe. I don't know. I could technically create a custom shillionaire role for every single person, I suppose. I don't know. I don't know how many of them we're going to necessarily have. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good response. In a game of variance, you have to play the game that's in front of you. plan to still be here in six years gosh how embarrassed are my children going to be if this is still my job in six years chat I 
think I committed another threat to the board. I think we just cracked to them here. Depends on how much you make in six years. Fair. I feel like children will be embarrassed regardless of dollar amounts. You're either going to be the coolest dad of their lives. I feel like... I feel like the card games aspect of it for small children probably won't really won't really do much for me. I want to hear stories about your teen kids. Here's open. So they have three cards left. What if I claim Croxa and then escape Croxa? Yeah, I, I kind of like just chewing them out of resources here. Yeah. Like just leave them with one card in hand. Yeah, I'm, def I'm definitely escaping Croxa that turn. I just wasn't sure what if I wanted to claim... If I wanted to claim Croxa or claim a Pyromancer back. Are they dead? They're pretty close to it, right? Oh, they haven't played a land yet this turn. That complicates things. How does Arcanist work with Aftermath cards? Um, you can target the end of the, the halves of it individually, so Arcanist can flashback claim. Hey, Blightman, thanks for the two months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I want extra Croxa here. Innocent Blood comes out, I think. Cling to Dust seems fine, because we can tag Uro with it. Um, I feel like because of Uro, we need to keep some number of claims, but I don't know that I necessarily want all of them. I feel like this is probably a matchup for some extra discard spells. All right, let's try this. Did I just, like, completely miss what I was doing and keep, keep, keep by mistake? I guess we'll see if I draw a black source. I intended to mulligan. Alright. God, God bless, I guess. Thought I- is- Mulligan's on the left side, right? Or am I going crazy? Am I going crazy? Mulligan's on the left side.
They keep playing Bajuka Bog super early, and that seems loose. Had several times at Arena this week. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure the client bugged there. I don't know. Someone feel free to go back and check the check the tape. Opponent using their Oracle of Moldaya and their Fable Pets here to try and find a spell on top that they want to draw. It happened to me three times this week where I leave the window. Okay, so I'm not, I didn't, I didn't like misclick something mad stupid. Like the client's actually bugged. I am, I am playing in window mode like I always do. We've had that happen before. Pretty, pretty sure the client's bugged there. It's good, good quality software all around. And, like, what's actually funny about that is, like, I've actually hit more bugs on Magic Arena since I switched to a Windows 10 setup than I did running it on Linux under Wine. Like, have, have had consistently had more issues running it on the platform that it's supposed to support. That could, that could be true too, Jin. It could be that the clients just continue to deteriorate the more patches that they push. And that I would still have these same issues on Linux. That's, that's probably reality. I haven't had any connection issues, Moose. So there's definitely the random internet hiccups are definitely something in the network stack on my Linux setup. But that could probably also be solved by... Could probably also be solved by, uh... Installing a different variation of Linux. I don't know. Doing, doing random sponsored stuff is easier... Is easier on a Windows setup, which is nice. not a bad draw so do i do do i do this now and get one of these two cards they're not likely to play both of these next turn right so i could wait to do this so that way i can village rights off of it it's not resource efficient though but like i have these village rights just like rotting in my hand i'm just gonna pass here so that way if the heartless actor kill this i can village rights it Yeah, my mouse is definitely...
My mouse is definitely over mulligan. My mouse is definitely over mulligan. Okay. Not crazy. Got it. Mid-range decks. Hello, lol. LOL mid-range decks. This deck just like stone cold to this card, huh? It's like actual, like actual zero outs. LOL, LOL mid-range decks is like big magic mood for the last year. I mean, like, you could play some cards that kill Ugin, I suppose. Yeah, if I had, like, Bedevil to draw to in this situation, we might be okay. Bedevil kills cages and stuff, too, which is nice. And obviously, I played the wrong land. Should have played Castle so I could stitch her here. But it matters, though. This is, this is unbeatable. A lot of, a lot of the time, you're still just gonna lose to Ugin, though. Because, like... You're not going to be able to recover after he sweeps your board in a lot of situations. Let's be greedy in bottom of land. Pretty sure I just want to attack their ability to get Field of the Dead. I mean, to be fair, saying that Ugin is everywhere is kind of a misnomer. my graveyard up here. You just mana throw Luris in my hand? How many were the top? I don't know. Go look. I know our top five players that went 7-2 or better there was only one ramp deck, and I don't I don't know that they had I don't know that they were really playing Ugin. I don't remember offhand. They probably were because they were a ramp deck, but I know they weren't they definitely weren't on four of them. The winning Sultai list had a single tin Ugin in it. it. Did not did not even have a second in the board. Yeah, it had, had one Ugin.
This is the part where we get bajuka bugged. Mr. 3000 the movie, thanks for the 20 bucks. Welcome back. I feel like my graveyard in this archetype is like a little bit too taxed to leverage Grim Lava Mancer appropriately. Hey, babe, thank you for the very generous sub gifties. Happy Monday. You're staying safe out there. It's annoying, but not the end of the world. I mean, again, just to like make my position abundantly clear, like the field field of the dead is not the reason we're gonna lose this matchup if we lose it. Like, we were like very, very we were very much going to beat Field of the Dead in the second game. And we got Ugin. Like Ugin Ugin is much harder for these interactive decks to beat than Field of the Dead. It's not particularly close. Like, we're not losing the land, we're losing all their sweepers and stuff. I feel like I'm kind of off this build. Let's try and, let's try and retool this a little bit. I feel like I want to be less interactive and more linear. Like getting, getting hammered by... Getting hammered by the Field of the Dead deck makes me want to just kill them faster. What's the other card called? Death something or other. Hey, eyeball head. Thanks for 15 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Call the Death Dweller. I mean, that's kind of just magic in general, too. Like, in, in general, being linear in magic tends to be better than being interactive. It's just how the game works. Yeah, yeah, I like the I like the idea of being a call the death dweller claim deck with with Archfiend Vessel. And like if that's the case, maybe we're not a Dreadhorde Arcanist deck. I guess Arcanist is pretty good with call, I suppose. Dreadhorde Butcher is different than Priest. I call it faster. It's just a different card. It takes a different role. I don't think Dreadhorde Butcher is something I'm really interested in playing. I 
Yeah, getting, getting, leaving some of these in seems fine. Because if you fame it, you can flashback call the Death Dweller, so that's fine. What problem is Lightning Axe solving, Team Master Ray? Where is, where is Lightning Axe better than Claim the Firstborn consistently? Eight lands? I don't know about eight lands. I could cut lands, though. We're at 23 lands. I don't hate light. Cutting Ifter dead lands. I think, I think I want some the devil in the boards. That way we're less cold to a resolve, do good. I don't really want a bunch of tap lands in my deck. Like, if I put more castles in my deck, I have, like, I already have seven things that don't bring castles into play untapped. Like, there's only swamps already. Like, the double castle or, like, castle dragon skull summon hands, like, really suck. I don't, I don't, I also don't feel like, like, the games where you have a bunch of young Pyromancer tokens don't feel like games that I'm having problems winning. Like, again, if you look at the details and think about, okay, what do the games look like? How are they playing out when I'm not winning? The games where young Pyromancer lives are not those games. Like, playing, playing a card like Castle to, like, maximize the games where I keep maximize the games where I keep Pyromancer in play seems weird. It's like not where I want to be in life. Yeah, Witch's Vengeance is maybe a card we don't need in the sideboard. Goblins hasn't been super popular. Oh, this is... This probably means they're playing the blue black fairy, or they're just straight green black variation, right? Because they're like playing this instead of mayhem double. It's cute. So I really want to draw a land next turn. <sighs> Feels magic, man. And then good chance we die from here because Woe Strider was on top of their deck, right? Call's probably a little slow. A little bit more interactive here, I think. Monster, thanks for the 22 months. Welcome back. Yeah, well, I mean, the goal of that build is obviously to lean into what we've been talking about here when we're changing this deck, right, Panda? Like, they're not trying to be interactive. They're trying to lean into the fact that being linear is ideal, and they're just trying to be linear and run people down, which seems like a good strategy.
Ooh, if they're not playing red mana, I don't have to worry about getting claimed the firstborn either. That sounds lovely. Oh, you know what? I punted here. So instead of attacking them for one with the elf, I should have floated a mana with it during my main phase, and then I could have put Luris in my hand. Should have been much better than what I did. Does Pyromancer have a foil in arena? I don't know. Maybe I should have had it sacrifice itself there since they had Coco mana up. Very possible. trade one of these for this I might be wrong Let's do this and see what we find this could dig us into the thing to make a 5-5 with next turn. Yeah, there's an Archfiend's Vessel. Right, so I think we just pass for now. Hope we don't die this turn. Alright, step step one, didn't get Citadel. kill them this turn i'm gonna make a bunch of tokens at the very least right so i'm gonna go young pyromancer and then we'll go claim the archfiend vessel yeah i want to force them to sacrifice as much of their board as possible right Means he is going to be Hooklandia's his first Chillionaire. Oh, 
How do you buy shells? You actually can't. So, you can once per month, once every 30 days, you can gift one sub or cheer at least 50 bits to get a small boost, but you can't just buy shillings outright. They're all, they are, they are time gated. It's still scrying bottom. And even if they hit the Citadel here, they, even if they hit the Citadel here, they have to, um, they don't have a ton of life, which is nice. Oh, right. I could... I keep thinking, why do I keep losing so much life? I forgot that this is both... It's been so long since cards were templated symmetrically, chat. In my in my head, I was like, oh, they should be lower than they are. It's because uh, sacrificing things to these also triggers Blood Artist. Beansy redeemed one shillionaire. Welcome to Hoglandia's first shillionaire. Ink, we're dead here, right, chat? Yeah, blood art blood artists are just super brutal. That one, that one deserves a twitter. Yeah, I think that's accurate, Monster. Since I didn't have lethal anyways, I should probably have gotten back the Dreadhorde Arcanist and given that haste to steal their thing. And then I could have sacrificed it to Priest before it was over. I agree with that assessment. A, an unborn clown. Thanks for the 15 months, by the way. Bottom of vessel here. The Shillionaire include a cut the line. Uh, includes a deck submission. Do I want to village right my priest to kill their ben th to kill their brazen borrower? The answer is no. Because I want my claim to make a five five next turn.
So we go no blocks here. And then we can cl claim, put this back, get a demon. I'm glad you have a shillionaire where you start your OnlyFans. I'm okay with this trade. I'm gonna go ahead and offer it. I'm not I'm not okay trading for the Biomancer, but I think I'm pretty okay to trade for this. Means he might be a shillionaire, but I bet he can't do this. Yeah, see? Wasting your shillings just like that, Sky Zero, is why Beansy is a shillionaire and you're not. Down with shillionaires, I'm a man of the people. the like highlight message tool for shillings is like more useful on other channels where streamers have a hard time catching chat messages but on an average, on an average day I catch most messages for most people okay they're like going for lethal here huh they're gonna like untap and kill me okay those are not the instants and sorceries I was hoping to draw. Those were not Kraxas that I was hoping to mill over. I think I'm giving plus two attack here. Oh, it doesn't have abilities anymore. Oh no, well, I'm a big dumb. I forgot that this diddle gets rid of abilities. Yikes. So I was flashing that back to uh, get a token, but here we are. I think we're, we're going to be okay. They didn't draw merfolk, so we had two blockers here. I should have had this in my hand, though, which would let me Archfiend Vessel this turn. Which is pretty unfortunate. Yeah, so like, if I wouldn't have flashback the fame last turn, I'd have Lurus already, and then we would have gotten to cast Archfiend Vessel and have another 5-5 five five here. And now, now I can't do that. Is that lethal? Not quite, but close. So I think we block like this and we go to two. This causes both of their lords to die. Because once one lord dies, the other one has two damage marked on it. Good lord. What are spells? I know I had some slops this game, but like... Pretty, pretty unfortunate as well. I 
I just hope they draw two bricks in a row here. They draw a way to diddle my Luris, I die, but... Okay. So this leaves me at two. If I kill this, I end up at three, which means if I draw a spell, I can play a land, play a spell, and then castle and possibly play another spell, which is probably ideal. At least, at least, oh, they, they're able to just adapt this, right? No, they're, they're gonna save the adapt. Okay, that makes sense. Juju, thanks for the 51 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, all right. So I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to attack them here because this way, if they draw a land, they're dead, right? I guess they have to draw two lands in a row. I don't know. I think if they didn't have the cantrip, I would attack. But because they have the draw discard here, it's pretty likely that I die. Oh, I'm not dead anyways. They have two attackers, all two blockers. It's easy, it's easy to look at a game like this and be frustrated that you flooded. It's easy to forget that on turn whatever it was, I flashed back a, I flashed back a fame instead of putting my Luris in my hand and that put me behind a turn on a Luris activation and made me take a bigger attack. So it's easy, it's easy to focus on the flooding and forget that I made a pretty big mistake that game. Can't can't control how many lands you draw. You can control making mistakes with your your sequencing decisions, though. I don't know if I have room for Bedevil here as well. I feel like on the play, at least, I want all the Call of the Death Dwellers. Hey, Ren Larzi, thanks for the brand new Prime Support. I appreciate that. Welcome to Oaklandia. You're having a good one wherever you're at. Hey, Jebanaw. Yeah, yeah, the open went really well yesterday. I was pretty, pretty happy with what our final result looked like. Hey, Draco, thanks for the 17 months. Welcome back.
Claim the Firstborn is an incredibly powerful card. Not about it. I think I'm just going wide here with these. Maybe, maybe it's wrong to play my two black one mana spells this turn because Priest is going to make black black next turn and I can't cast these red cards with it. Yeah, I think because of the way my lands are with this, I'm probably supposed to play Young Pyromancer or Dreadhorde this turn. Thanks, Logan. Yeah, so there's definitely going to be another open next month. I think there's... I got to work out the logistics with Christy because um, my cool stuff person just messaged me back shortly before I went live today, but I'm pretty sure we're going to be doing two opens next month. Is the is the plan standard standards going to be rotating so i'd like to do a standard open after that rotation happens but i would also like to make sure we fit historic in nai reed thanks for the two-thirds of a year cool stuff cool stuff inc's been happy with what we've been doing so they said they're up for putting up price support for two next month yeah yeah one standard and one historic is what we're what do you think the plan's gonna be? Priest here, just getting to run over this game. Uncheck priest in the creature matchup is very good. Uh, that's feedback you would have to pass along to MTG Melee Soren. I don't, I don't handle any of the money for, for it. I'm actually kind of surprised that Melee doesn't take PayPal as a payment option. But I don't, I don't have control over their site. We'd be a little sad when Historic and Pioneer line up. That that's the lazy smooth brain take. It really it really impresses me. Like the historic pioneer conversation really highlights to me how many people don't understand how m formats and card games are meaningful and different. Like I would encourage you to go look at vintage and go look at legacy. And look at how very different those two formats are with an almost identical card pool. Because adding a small number of very powerful cards to a format, or changing the ban list ever so slightly, are very big things that change the texture of the format incredibly. Historic is already has over 200 cards in it that are not Pioneer legal, and that number is only going to keep going up as more of Pioneer gets added to this platform. That's interesting to know. I'm kind of surprised that debit cards in other countries can't be used as credit cards. Like, literally every... Literally every credit every debit card you get in the United States, like, is also a Visa, MasterCard, or Discover card. So you can use it as a credit card without a PIN number. Oh, that's true too. Prepaid, prepaid, prepaid credit cards are definitely a thing. Like you buy you buy a Visa or MasterCard gift card, it has just the amount of money that you pay to put on it. I don't I don't know if that's is that is that not a thing that exists in the U UK as well? What is going on? TV, late 
Thanks, please. Um, he doesn't really do anything, right? So we're hoping that they don't have Brazen Borrower here. Also, for anybody at home looking at this hand that I kept, I am a professional Magic player. Do not keep one-landers like this at home. Or if you do, keep them at your own risk. I think this was fun for my opponent. That's why we kept the hand, by the way. Because we could do we could make five fives guaranteed, and if we ran some lands off, we just slaughtered them. It doesn't, uh, Christy. It's a feature that I've asked for from Twitch, but in its current state, I cannot see how many people have access to, to what. Yeah, really, really seeing some of the power of Archfiend Vessel and Claim Fame there, right? Like, two cards, two mana make a 5-5 five five is, like, pretty reasonable. Yes, Beansy is officially Hoaglandia's first Shillionaire. It's actually pretty sweet. Would like an untapped black source on one, but you know. Each other rogue creature you control enters battlefield with one one counter. The creature you control with one counter deals combat damage to a player. They discard a card. Okay. Um, hmm. Steal your creature for one mana. Use your creature to fuel my ancient tomb. Draw a bunch of cards. Yeah, this is... This is a... Uh, I was surprised to see this card get added to this to this format. To say, to say the least.
I have no idea. Uh, God, probably not. Probably. That's still a pretty powerful effect regardless. I don't, I don't know that any of the decks that play it wouldn't play it if it cost them life. Hop says, I randomly might be able to answer the payment method question. It looks like they use Stripe for payments on Melee. I work at Stripe, but I'm checking to see what other methods they could use. That would be nice. So we'll go Priest Priest here, probably. Kind of expecting this to get counterspelled. Maybe I should have played... Yeah, I probably should have played my Priest pre-combat. So that way, if they had a counterspell like they were likely to, I could have attacked with Young Pyromancer in the clear and not worried about a flash threat. Wow, those are all humans, and that was a main deck, which is Vengeance. Huh. Someone, someone's been hurt by goblins. Maybe I'm just supposed to put Luris in my hand there, rather than play Citrus Supplier and Village Rights. Although this sets me up to escape, I guess I n technically not set up to escape Crocs the next turn. I am now because we drew the land. Yeah, this deck's ability to recover has definitely been impressive so far. And, like, there's currently 23 cards in my bin. So, like, even if they counter or kill this Croxa, like, it's going to come back next turn, right? My opponent doesn't have us under a real clock. Historic Waffle? gives me big vibes of when I really loved Modern before Modern turned into whatever 2019-2020 magic turned it into. Gives me, reminds me a lot of like the Splinter Twin, Splinter Twin Birthing Pod Jund era of Modern. This is why we left up Phyrexian Tower. I want to just empty their hands here. I could, I could like Luris cast Luris, make a five five, but yeah, this uh, this red black deck has a lot of a lot of intricacies in it, and and honestly, it has a lot of different tools that. You know, they have main deck Legion's End. I'm just going to hold up Tower rather than putting this in my hand. That's a lot of customization too, right? Like, our list is, is a number of cards different than the one we started with that did, did well in the open this past weekend. Still, still humming along. Oh, I should have left Tower up. Let me get Legion's End that didn't deserve it.
Turn two, getting two five fives. Oh, so what's that? It's Stitcher supplier on one, mill two fiends, double claim in hand. Sounds great. Alright, so... Do I bring in Witch's Vengeance because they're a rogue deck? Is that... Is that where I'm at in my life? A Braid and Claim the Firstborn sound good. They have counter spells, so Thought Seize seems okay. Um, I feel like I don't mind trimming Call. Try let's try this. You yeah, don't know, I don't know how wide they're gonna go, and which is vengeance is kind of expensive, and it's not an instant speed. Sure. So this weekend, I imported the wrong list, ended up 4x claim the firstborn over claim fame in this deck, somehow squeaked down a 3-2 still, that's great, or 4-2 still, so that's great. I'm just playing priest here. Just try and get this going. They're gonna have like disfigure here. Deep Skeleton Force. What does this actually do? Opponent mills two cards. As long as an opponent has eight or more cards in the graveyard, this gets plus two plus one. Sure. Yes, the next open will definitely be standard. However, we are also go I, we're going to be doing two opens next month. Is the is the plan? Well, that's that's just good some good deck building right there. Uh, we've actually not played Cut Ribbons on stream. There's just so many tools in these decks. I haven't had room yet. Yes, we'll definitely be after the standard open. So the, st the standard, the, the very next Hoaglandia tournament will be September 20th, and it will definitely be standard. Then I need to I need to talk with my boss who's currently watching, but unless Christy sees a reason on her schedule to not do it, the historic open will likely be the 27th the following weekend. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Zendikar slash rotation happens on the 17th on Arena. That Thursday before. Good job. Four days to build and test standard decks. But Jukabog, rude.
Recently learned that split cards from my kit are supposed to have a two in between their names, cut two or big click. Yeah, yeah, that's how their their name names are formatted. It's true, you know. So, I don't really have anything super useful to say at the end of this for people that are looking for conclusions. I, I feel like after playing for 90 minutes with this archetype, I have more questions than answers left over. Like, there's just so many... Yeah, it's definitely sweet. There's just so many different tools and like numbers on your cards to mix and match and figure out what you really want to be doing i my gut says that whatever is optimal probably involves this card like like if a point i can hammer into your brain is being proactive in magic is good that's the one thing you should take away from my streams in general and this card lets this archetype that has a number of great interactive elements also apply significant amounts of pressure efficiently early. And Archfiend's Vessel, along with Claim Fame and Luris, felt really good. I honestly, I'm not even sure that you need Call the Death Dwellers with this card, um, but it is nice because Death Dwellers can rebuy your Luris after your Luris dies, which is sweet in addition to doing this. Someone pointed out earlier that they had a draw with this deck where on turn one, they Stitcher Supplier and High Rolled milled two of these, and then on turn two, claimed them both back into play. So they had 11 power on turn two, which is awesome. Like again, like those, those types of linear proactive game plans when, you know, your thought seizes and your claim the firstborns don't line up seems fantastic. So yeah, yeah, the only, I don't know that you want this card. I don't know that my numbers on Arcanist and Croxa are right. Like, but you probably want, I wouldn't be surprised if you want four claim, but there's a lot of things to noodle with here. Something that we didn't try to do that we talked about is uh, cut ribbons is a really powerful effect. Like the front half of this is a piece of interaction that's going to be meaningful in a lot of spots. And the back half, if you self mill into it, is literally just fireball you get to cast out of the graveyard to kill your opponent. Yeah, seems, seems really, really fantastic. Like I said, if you're looking for a mid-rangey deck that can also be aggressive when necessary, I think this is probably one of the best places to start in this format, something around, around this. All right. At any rate, uh, don't go anywhere just yet. We're done with that deck, but I'm going to be doing at least three magic decks every day during the week this week. I'm going to hit a quick ad roll while I get everything set up and flipped over. When we get back, we are going to kick the tires on some green-black collected company here. Be back in just a few. Thanks for hanging out today, folks. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 